Do you even know who the fuck I am? Do ya? Alright, what is up guys? For week two, it's Fairberry. New trap, sort of. Um, a very divisive track. Not a lot of people like it. Arguably was the worst track in the game before the changes. But now as you can see, we got new tires pushed all the way in. Um, here's how they were before. Uh, this is going to be backwards, so it's going to be dumb. So it's about, I don't know, five feet or whatever you see where they were before. And then compared to turn, that's turn one and two, and this is turn one and two now. Get out of there. There's turn one and two now, so you see they're on the grass as opposed to maybe there, 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 there. Essentially what it did, though, is just give us an extra group of racing. Now, is this group going to be the fastest? No, and part of that is because you're fighting against that negative bank, and that bank is pushing you up the racetrack. Um, but it does make the track wider, better for slide jobs, just better, more all-around room. And that's what you want to see in iRacing. Any track that's the wider, the better, because there's more grooves. Um, if you look at Weed Sport now, you know, there's pretty much only two lanes, so it's like once half the track gets slick, everyone moves to water part, and then that gets slick and then it's generally kind of locked down from there um that's why you know the bigger tracks that have more grooves where you can get three four even five grooves it's better um all around on i racing um so i knew this was gonna be a good uh you know i pushed for this for a while because you know look at Coke what happened with kokomo kokomo became the best track um just simply because it gave you know they moved since they moved the tires in and you know, that even added two extra grooves, I'd argue, um, at Kokomo. Um, but Fairbury didn't quite do that, but it does help bring in the bottom. Now, because there is that little bit of negative banking, so we'll kind of call this is kind of like the true bottom. And you gotta be careful because there's like a little crease right where it meets the flat part in one and two, where if you come in and you hit that crease and spin tire there, like say you're trying to Say you're trying to arc the corner and just come across it the wrong way you're gonna it gets your rear end so sideways i've ran a couple officials i've done that a lot um and you gotta watch for that wrong in the bottom but um i think i ran four officials three of them started pre-gen generally your pre-gens just a little bit of it's more slick on the straightaway than it is the corners but it kind of just gives you more banking in the corner so even though there might be grip down here it's it's still faster to run around the top just because you can't also it makes it harder to arc in to run the bottom properly or fast at least <clears throat> and so when the pre-gen's there it's really still just top top and qualifying maybe you can get away with it more because three and four is a little flatter and you can get away with running the middle in three and four i've done that a couple times where i qualify top one two bottom three and four um, but anytime it's pre-gen, it's still been top, but there was one, uh, race where it started out completely fresh, and, um, I have that up in the background, and that I still qual- I think I still qualified top, bottom, but for the heat races, it ended up all being, um, in the middle, bottom, and so we'll show you how to run those, um, but yeah, so first thing though, generally, it's still, uh, it's- on a fresh track faster as it wears around the top just because there is the banking and so you'll usually get a little thin line and then you also really determines the gap that's between that thin line and the wall how much you can get your right rear how much you can get your whole car above that slick on the wall higher up the banking um that will kind of really tell you the line but generally it's still uh it'll tell you how fast the top is really where if that's narrow, then you can is when you start seeing the bottom come in. But um, every time it's still been top and one and two, and um, you really have to uh, square these corners out. What I mean by that is you run them like a square, almost a rectangle like that. Um, you don't really see it from up above, which is kind of surprising. Um, you kind of there's also there's like a, a little nook kink right here in the wall. And there's also a bump that has been really upsetting to the race car that I noticed in one and two right up there by that, just past that. Um, so it's made the top running a lot harder. I don't know if that's new this build or I just forgot about it or what. 
but it, um, it's made the top a lot harder. Um, but generally, you can kind of see it. You kind of you come in, and then it gets really straight right here. So now you can kind of see how you'd run the rectangle I'm talking about. But then you got to be really careful on it too about hanging that right rear tire out because you want to get the moisture. But um, you end up getting into this wall a lot. You end up tapping it, which obviously you can't do in qualifying. But you either spin out or you can just kind of lightly go up and tap that. And you'll see that a lot in late in late races and heat races. But late in races, once it's really slick, sometimes you just, you know, you end up going and tapping that wall. But you've got to be really careful because if you have too much throttle, your car's going to run up the wall and break the rear axle right there on the straightaway. Um, the wall is, <coughs> I don't know if it's just scanned that way or the cars generally seem a little too big in iRacing. And the, the wall seems really, really short right there on the back stretch. And in a sprint car, you can drive up that really, really quick. <coughs> Um, as far as like a late model go, I haven't ran a race yet, um, but um, it used to kind of be where you could run a big slider line and go up to the top and use the bank to come back down. But now, given how much room you have lower still, I just think it think it it you can't get all the way out to the wall without losing speed. So it's kind of gonna be you're kind of just gonna be coming up to the middle and running a slider to the middle and that's it and that's something you kind of saw in the midgets before the midgets did that and it especially did that in three and four but i think you'll see that now more in one and two and you'll see it stick around longer because there's just there's more grip to be made there <clears throat> and that's what i think the late model line will be it'll still be you'll still be top around at the start but then i think the bottom will be stick around and be a lot more viable in late models or in sprint cars it's not quite as much um, and it's not quite as much as I thought the middle really gets hindered in one and two. I'll talk about that later, but, um, so what we saw in these heat races were, so after qualifying, it looked like this and heat races were about around the bottom, but the fastest way to do that was to come in really, really wide and make your straightaway longer and kind of cut down the track, diamond the track. Whereas if you, if you slid up like this, you'd hit this bank and remember, like I said, it pushes you out this way. So it pushes you out towards here, and then you're losing your speed there going into the straightaway, maybe even hitting that slick on exit, and it's just not the faster way. But now you got to be careful with these intersecting lines. And it actually happened to be in this heat race, where when you run that kind of diamond cut down line, you're going to open yourself up to people who come in low, and they either think you're going high, or they just lose you, and you're in the blind spot of their wing, they come in low, and... Um, you're going to get in trouble and you're going to run you, they can run into you so you got to be careful about that um, I think we see that in this heat race here so I'm this car down here I'm off pull on the start and then see I come in at the bottom so I'll just let this play and then I slide up and then I push tight allow the guy to get under me but now I try to use that cut down line and he kind of fills in my lane and then we make contact there now ultimately this is on me I was stubborn I try to drive around it as you can see right there I kind of steer back to the right to get around it but it all started with me leaving my wing back getting too tight out of turn two so you know I could have lifted in turn four or two but I was stubborn you know that's racing nothing to be mad at there was a gap um, it got filled and but that's something you got to watch for then when you're trying to arc the corner and make your straightaways longer when you leave the door open like that um, that's what's going to happen but like i said you saw me push you saw me push out of turn two there because i got so tight coming off entering on that bottom and then he even brushed the wall a little bit there on the back straight away um but you also see all these loose crumbs getting pushed up the racetrack i think you'll see if i can just skip to like heat two yeah and now you see where the crumbs are now on the track so when everybody's running the bottom like that not the top you're gonna you know it just really really covers the whole racetrack and you want to be careful when you want to run a little higher dip you only want to dip your right rear into those crumbs essentially if you go four wheels over you don't know what's under there you don't know where the slick starts for the top and generally i end up hitting it and it, it's just a, a really bad time so you always want to inch your way up the crumbs um if you're trying to widen out the racetrack trying to get that middle trying to make the corner wider to carry speed around it um so you gotta be careful with those crumbs. And I think come feature time, we'll take a look at this racetrack. 
So here's the very start of the feature, yeah. And you can see the crumbs, and you see the slick spots on it. You see it up here, you can't see, you can't see my mouse right now, but um, on entries you see the slick spot. So if we go about midway through the feature, I'm not sure what lap the car. We're on lap about 12. Now look at this. You see, still see a distinguished loose crumbs, but you see where that middle came in a little bit. You would not have had that before. And then you have that bottom line also. So it's just taking a look at one and two, which is the right side right here. Um, um, you, here you go. You still you see the bottom. See some work in the bottom there. You see that middle lane, and then you have the top. And top kind of kept crumbs on it the whole race. Um, so it's even it's even harder then for those guys on top to see where that moisture starts, where they're trying to hang out that tire and make the most grip. But it's you still have the wall there, so you can still kind of see. Um, you can judge, you know, how far you want to be up, obviously. But you see three distinct lines, and that's something. I thought this track would be better than Lima Land once they move the tires in. I don't think it's going to be quite that, um, but it does help. The bottom, you know, it still goes to the top, but the bottom is certainly more viable for people who aren't necessarily comfortable running the top. And it makes lap traffic a lot more fun because, you know, now, like, if someone makes a mistake in front of you, before you could tr go to the bottom and, and, you know, try to, you know, get a run on them for the next corner or something. But you'd be lucky if you kind of broke even. But now you can even maybe clear them and even make a pass if someone makes a mistake from the top side. Um, so, like I said before, talking about box in the corner, that's what you want to do on these. And you want to go in, you want to come in as wide as you possibly can probably here more than any other track is that the most important where you just make your corner as wide as possible it helps you come downhill on exit you maintain speed middle and it makes the whole corner a lot easier because like i said if you come in low you're going to slide up and then where there's that kink in the wall you're just going to pancake it and it's it's just a bad time so you really come in turn hard get it straighter and then try on exit try to get that hang that right rear out and you're making the rest of the corner on top that's how you got to run the top here both ends more so in three and four even more um, but it's the same principles apply in one and two um, like you said you still had that top so the top would have been slicker and then a little wider on exit a little wider on entrance and then there was like a slick middle line like this like I said, you still all night you have to be wary of that little crease I said there too. Um, but then you can run the the middle isn't as good as one and two as it is in three and four. Um, I think it's I think three and four might be wider. It races wider, um, but it's something with the banking or what where it still really narrows up on entry to be able to you can't really turn down and you can't really hang it you know you can't enter low and try to hang it you can a little bit but it's just so tough to get a drive out of turn two when you do that um so you even gotta play with the brakes a little bit um if you come in low on the to run the bottom like i said you're fighting that bank and you gotta really wait for the track to get slick before i think the bottom will come in you might not see won't see that in officials maybe some lead races um but it's still good if you come in if you've got no one above you and you can arc it and then you, you carry more momentum over that banking that's pushing you out so it doesn't affect you as much. And you can get to that exit where there's all that good drive. Um, but it's just really tough to get to this part of the track in a sprint car, where in a late model, or especially a modified. Modifieds are probably fucking these tits here. They're pretty good before. Um, but mods are probably gonna race really, really good here now. Um, Cause they can just go in, throw it, and then come out. <clears throat> where you can't really do that you gotta maintain more speed in a sprint car but um that's one and two like i said other it's still top is still the fastest but this certainly makes the racing better um it just gives people more options still um just be careful that crease getting really sideways like um if you're a person to run the bottom but like i said it opens up for slide jobs it's it's just so much better so we'll just move on to three and four a lot of the same characteristics we saw slick spot in a pre-gen um but there, there there's still a little bit of a crease but i think it's more on like closer to entry here um where it will spin your car out um but you also have to be wary there's a big bump out of here still like before you can't it was it was it was even there when the tire was like right here but now without the tire you can get lower and you really feel that and where that really affects it is it, it kind of takes the bottom away on exit so you don't necessarily have that third lane to go to, but it makes the middle so much better. 
um, but on restarts, you know, when leaders are cutting down, that's where you're going to see it. Where that might be the, le the leaders line on a restart, cutting down might be above it. But you know how the people behind it inch down, inch down, and eventually this guy's going to hit that bump. And that will completely, it will lift the front end of your car if you're full throttle on it and throw your nose and you'll go to the outside wall. So you got to be very wary about that. I know there's a lot of good grip down here on restarts that you want to get on the straightaway, but you got to be very, you just got to have that in your mind. That that bump is there and it can really screw you up um but the same thing the true bottom is really kind of you know it's a little it's a little lower down there but um what you're gonna see is once so we'll give our top our slick line Oops. and here you see that orange part too this is where the kink is it's nice that there's like an orange i don't know if that's a start line at, at the track or they put that there to say hey this is where the track the wall steps out you know in real life um so you gotta be careful about that and that's what i said you gotta drive it like a box to get past that and then you can get all this grip on exit like even sort of coming out of here on this entrance um there's always good dirt and that's why i said it's, more, it's, a, little, it's a little more so on this end of a track than it is in one and two just because this king's better and there's a, you know a little more dirt on exit it's um better but I think it is flatter or wider or what um, that you're gonna get this slick spot. Same same principles though. Just come in in a heat race, try to make your straightaway as long as possible. Cut down the track. Um, you you can slide up it, but like I said, um, it's better to just maintain that you know top speed around the corners. Um, so that's in like a heat race, and then that lane will kind of get slick, and then. But it's where what's the biggest difference is that brings in the middle. The middle can be, it, it will never be better, I don't think, than the top in like mid feature, but it will, it can be just as good. Um, I think it will be. And like I said, you'll see those sandy crumbs. Um, prob like I said, you saw it below it and above it in that, but you'll probably see it below it a lot of the time. And you'll kind of have to feel out where that middle is, but. Um, if you can get it there and angle the car right, like you gotta be careful because there's a lot of slick on entrance. So it can be hard to get, but once you get it, it digs. Um, and you still gotta be patient on throttle and exit. You got because there's gonna be that slick from the top coming down, and then all the people sliding up um, from the bottom. <clears throat> but um, it's a lot more viable. I'd say. The, the bottom is more viable late in a race in 1 and 2 than 3 and 4 because of the bump. But the middle on this end is more viable than the bottom is in 1 and or than the middle is in, in 1 and 2. Um, that bottom generally keeps more grip because people stay off it because of this bump. So it still can be fast as long as you're aware of the bump. Like I said, if you're full speed coming over that bump, it's not going to be good. But if the race track slows down enough where it, oops, where it gets black slick, all the way across your lightest dirt your most grip is going to be right there on the bottom um, and as long as you can come in and keep it on the bottom and not wash out into the slick here um, I know you'll avoid that bump but then you won't have any drive off the corner because of that um, but yeah generally it's it's still fastest around the top especially come feature but at least there's a lot more maneuverability now and that's just something that you didn't have before um, and that's why and that's why you know we we knew just moving the tires in was gonna make this track better. Um, and like I said, if you're not comfortable running the top, you're still gonna hate this track because you know it's gonna seem three tenths to a half a second faster or something per lap at times. Um, but at least it gives you all, you know a lot more room to work with along the bottom. Um, but like I said, with the, with the top, just try to practice boxing those corners. Enter as wide as you possibly can. That's the most important part in just running the top at any track, but probably here more than any other track, uh, entering high is important because you have to really make a box. You got to box those corners and get all the grip on exit. Hang your right rear out as much as you can without spinning the tires. Straightaways are a motherfucker here. You're just, you're, you're, you're not accelerating once you're out of the corner you're just trying to maintain 25 percent throttle 30 whatever it is you're just trying to maintain that speed to straight away until you get to the next corner and then you probably put more gas in it in the corner than you do on the straightaways um so but yeah i think i think um 
late model racing is going to be good, especially mods here. Midgets were already pretty decent, but um, it's still it's going to it helps all the cars. But the sprint cars not as much. Um, um, but you can at least get a better race without it having it, leaving it so um, so hooked up with so much moisture. You can get a better race out of letting a track kind of naturally go 50% or whatever it is. But once it's past that, once everything's slicked up, it'll still be the top just because it's still banking. But um, that's almost kind of how February is in real life, at least. Um, but that's what it is. That's February. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as always, peace the fuck out.